Hello everyone, I'm Darth Lokwitter. I'm putting together this holocron for new players, people who just found the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes mobile game uh, around 2024 or later. I want to take some time to explain what this game is, what it isn't, what you can expect, whether or not you have to spend money, all kinds of things like that to help you as a newer player make sure that you're making the best decision for yourself and decide whether or not this is the right kind of mobile game for you to invest your time in. So we're going to talk through whether or not you can play for free, whether it's fun. We're going to talk about the different game modes. We're going to talk about the mod system in the game, how to manage your energy. And then last, if you're going to spend money in the game, the right way to spend money right up front to make sure that you don't have regrets or spend it on something that isn't worthwhile. So as of 2024, uh, the game, uh, playing free to play for this game is very unrewarding at the moment. They've created a catch up mechanic several years back called the hyperdrive bundle the hyperdrive bundle pushes you straight to level 85 gives you a whole group of characters that are um, gear eight and five stars it, it's a lot of progress and at the time that the hyperdrive bundle was created it represented almost a year worth of playing and it's a it's a really a good value since then they've created light speed bundles as a catch-up mechanic at the start of the game, there was gear 11, they introduced gear 12, then relic levels, then they took relic levels up through 7, 8, 9. So over time, the amount of building that you have to do on each character has gone up and up and up. So for a new player, it really takes a long time. You could be playing for many years and not even, uh, you know, be half of what uh, is available in the game. So they've created light speed bundles as a catch-up mechanic. Buying a light speed bundle, they've offered them at relatively low cost, and they're full of characters that are already relic or ships that are seven stars with relic pilots. Uh, it's a really easy, convenient, and cost-effective way to help a new player catch up. The problem that that's created in the game, if you're trying to play free-to-play, uh, you'll start the game, you'll be among players in your fleet and arena shard who have the same kind of account that you do, but if they buy the hyperdrive bundle and buy one of these light speed bundles with a bunch of relic characters in it, you will never be able to participate or compete in any of the game modes um, for fleet arena or squad arena. And once your account starts getting behind, it's really hard to develop anything in the account. So playing free-to-play right now is really a, a difficult way to play the game, and I can't recommend it. So think about that. If you want to play a completely free-to-play game, uh, this may no longer be the kind of game that you want to play. Now the Hyperdrive Bundle, as of this Holocron, costs $50 to purchase, and it's uh, one of the highest value packs in the game. If you convert everything that you get in this pack to crystal cost, it's a huge cash value, just massive. Even for players that have been playing the uh, game for a long time, it still provides enough crystals and gear to justify the purchase many times over. So if you click that hyperdrive bundle, if you already made that purchase or you intend to make that purchase, it is one of the highest value uh, purchases in the game. So there'll be no regrets there. So let's talk about fun. If, if you want to have fun with this game, there's a lot of ways to have fun. If you're a collector, you like Star Wars, you just want to collect up some cool Star Wars characters and play with your friends, it, it's fun. If you're a competitive player, there are plenty of ways to challenge yourself, uh, both PvE, which is player versus environment in the game, and PvP, player versus player. There's no head-to-head -head combat, so there's no time where you're in the game uh, playing live one-on-one -on -one against another player. It's all set up so that you arrange your teams ahead of time and if you play against another player the AI is going to play their teams you'll play your own teams uh, so there's no head-to-head -head PvP but there is plenty of opportunities to play against other people's teams it is a community game if you're going to play Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes you need to have discord you need to be active on discord join a guild join a community you can join my community by clicking on the link down below join my discord it's a fantastic community for new players you can come over there get all kinds of information learn how to use uh, things to uh, evaluate your account and guide you on what to build next it, it really is the best gaming community that, that that I think I've ever been a part of. So that's one of the best ways to have fun is if you like to be part of a, of a group. Um, can new players compete? If you want to be the top of Grand Arena, the Grand Arena system has 25 tiers. 
uh, you, if you're a new player, you are not going to be at the top of Grand Arena. You can constantly challenge yourself to win and to move up and to have fun that way. But if you're one of the kinds of people that needs to be number one, you need to be the best. If you're just starting out this game, um, you have no chance to be number one in Grand Arena, for example. You can be number one in squad or fleet systems. Uh, those generate new shards as people bring in new accounts. Once a squad arena fills up, it generates a new squad arena shard. Uh, once the fleet arena system fills up, it generates a new fleet arena. So those are happening frequently. They're not that many players in each one, so you can compete among the, the players at your level. But you can't compete uh, with people who've been playing the game for seven years. Um, uh, so again, it's just just a just a warning to people who want to be able to get into a game and make some purchases and then feel like they're winning. Uh, you're not going to be able to do that with this particular Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes mobile game. So let's talk about getting started. Maybe you got started, you bought the Hyperdrive bundle, or maybe you're a new player, you've already been playing the game and you want to know how to focus. Let's talk about which game modes are the most important. Early on, Fleet Arena is going to be absolutely the most important. And then we'll talk about events, raids, guild events, conquest, Grand Arena, and Squad Arena. And that, to me, is the order of importance for these different events. If you're thinking about what to build in your account, think first about Fleet Arena, think second about events, etc. So as you're starting out the game, Fleet Arena currently, as of the making of this, has crystals as a daily payout if you get a high enough placement. They've talked about changing that. It hasn't happened yet, so as of now, participating in Fleet Arena, getting high placement in your Fleet Arena, is a way to get crystals in the game that you can't otherwise get. This is a snowball effect. Once you start getting crystals in Arena, Fleet Arena, it helps you build your account faster. Once you start building your account faster, other people have a harder time catching up. That keeps you at the top of Fleet Arena. So as long as you focus on staying uh, in the top five in Fleet Arena, you'll get more crystals than other players. Now, don't worry if other people build good fleets. There's uh, payout time. You get paid out once during 24-hour period, and every hour represents a payout time. So 24 different people could uh, score number one if they all 24 have different payout times. So play during your payout time, get your high placement, and then let other people place for the other 23 hours a day, and it'll be fine. Uh, events are a way to get gear in the game, and again, the more events that you qualify early on, you'll get loot from those events, you'll be able to build more characters, that'll help you participate in more events and get more gear and snowball your account. So, a few things early on, you want to be able to do credit heist, smugglers run, galactic challenges are important, and assault battles have a specific type of gear that you want to qualify for, uh, get some assault battles up and running early on. So those are a way, uh, something you have to think about when building your account is how to get these assault battles done. Uh, raids are critical. So going forward in the game, you want to get into a guild that's doing the featured raid. Right now the featured raid, as of the making of this holocron, is the um, speeder bike raid. And uh, you want to get into a guild that's doing that. Raids trigger on a certain amount of tickets. Each player can earn up to 600 tickets per day. You generate tickets for every energy you spend on light or dark energy or on cantina energy. So just by spending that energy in your guild, you generate tickets, that generates raids, that generates loots for your whole guild. If you get into a good guild early on, they'll probably require you to get something like 400 tickets per day as a minimum. Uh, if your guild doesn't have a ticket requirement, you probably want to be in a better guild that does have a ticket requirement. You want to be in a guild that's generating these raids uh, to help you uh, get better loot in your account. If you're in a guild that's doing, you know, simming one of the older raids or doing Heroic Sith Raid, that's okay for the first couple months, but after that you will want to get into a guild that's doing the featured raid. Guild events uh, are pretty important. Uh, guilds usually focus more on territory battles or territory wars. Territory battles are a player versus environment uh, event the territory Wars are a PvP event that uses all the squads for your whole guild. That's a pretty fun way to play for people who like that kind of competition. Conquest is a game mode that will unlock at 85. Start with easy, move up to normal as soon as you can. 
I don't really want to go into detail for CogQuest. There's a lot to it, but just suffice to say, as soon as you can get out of easy, go to normal. If you get the third box on normal, it's already better than the entire completion of easy. So you want to get up into normal as soon as you can complete easy and qualify. Even if you can't complete normal, it's still better than being an easy. Uh, Grand Arena, Grand Arena used to be the reason to play Swiggo. Uh, it's what got me into the game early on. I loved the idea of using your whole roster to fight against another person's whole roster. It's it's really a fun idea. Uh, since then, there have been changes to Grand Arena. It's no longer the way to build your account. So it is a fun game mode. It's something you want to pay attention to. But very, right when you start out the game, you don't worry so much about Grand Arena. The lower tiers are polluted with high-level accounts that don't play. It can get very frustrating. So just lean back, let it come to you, understand you'll push your way up through those lower levels of Grand Arena as you build your account. But uh, don't get in there and think you're going to do fantastic at Grand Arena and then struggle with it and get frustrated and quit. It's not critical early on. And last but not least, Squad Arena. Uh, just place somewhere. You don't care about Squad Arena. It... It feels like, when you first join the game as a new player, it feels like Squad Arena is what you should be paying attention to. Hey, I can build my best squad of characters and win this Squad Arena thing against other people. Um, it's the least rewarding game mode in the game. The rewards are not that good. Other people get super competitive building a good team early on, so it can be very expensive to try to catch up and keep up with other people who are spending a lot of money. So don't do it. Just forget about Squad Arena. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. As you progress to the mid game, so you, you start out in the early game, um, then you progress to the mid game, maybe six months in, you've completed your first big journey. Uh, I usually recommend doing one of the big fleets first. Maybe you do a Galactic Legend first if that's your preference. But, uh, you know, a few months in, you're starting to get into this mid game, then your uh, focus is going to shift. So, Conquest is going to be the most important, Fleet Arena is still going to be the second most important, and then the other events after that. So why do we need to focus on Conquest? Each Conquest introduces a new character or ship into the game. Right now, you can only get these characters through Conquest and then through the follow-up stuff with uh, Proving Grounds and things like that. But basically, if you don't get these characters in Conquest, it's, you don't really have much of a chance to get them elsewhere in the game. They're the newest characters. They're very powerful. Having those characters can be, you know, in the mid-game. Uh, It'll differentiate you from other people. If you can get these characters and other people can't, those are the people that you're going to beat in Grand Arena, for example. So qualifying yourself for hard mode conquest and being able to complete hard mode and get these characters is really um, a critical aspect of the game. So the very first thing you want to do, you want to come in, you want to build a big fleet, you want to establish that fleet dominance so you can get those crystals every day. As soon as you do that, you're going to start working on teams that are going to be great in Conquest. You want to build two or three teams that can help carry you through hard Conquest and give you a chance to get a lot of these character shards as soon as, the, as soon as they're up. You do need to be 4 million galactic power to qualify for hard Conquest. Right now, if you just come into the game and you play sort of free-to-play, it's going to be a year and a half, two years before you'll get to 4 million galactic power. If you buy the hyperdrive bundle and one or two light speed bundles, you're going to get close to 4 million galactic power in a very short period of time. So just understand that 4 million galactic power hard conquest comes up fast if you do hyperdrive and a couple of the light speed bundles. So build good teams that are ready for hard conquest, things like the CLS team, Galactic Legend teams, things like that. I won't go into all the details there, but it just gives you an idea of what to focus on. Light speed bundles have been a very high value purchase, and uh, with with those, the four million it, it can come up in a few months, right? So we already talked about the importance of fleet, but here I'll just kind of show this, these are the crystals that you can get, and you can see the crystals go up very quickly. So if you get fiftieth place up to twentieth place, it's fifty crystals. Top 20 gets you 100, top 10 gets you 200, and then top 5 goes from uh, 300 up to three, uh, 400 crystals for the uh, top place number 1. And you can't get those crystals somewhere else in the game. So, um, it, it, also you get fleet currency. So let's just talk about that. There's a shop 
So the very first thing that you see, those discs, uh, the purple discs there, those are fleet currency for the shop. The higher you place, the more fleet currency you get. You can buy Zeta materials with that fleet currency. That's also another rare resource in the game that you can get uh, for good fleet placement. So it's the absolute priority. That's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on that. I think that either starting out, working your way toward that profundity or the executor, is the first journey that needs to be done on any account. I will do two starting guides for 2024. One of them is going to be building into the profundity. One of them is going to be building into the executor. I think those are the two build paths. It's the most important thing in the game, so those will be my starting guides. Just to discuss a little bit how ships work so that you understand this, it's, it's not intuitive from the game. So if you say, well, how do I make my ships better? The answer is you have to make your characters better. So there's this kind of weird thing where as you increase the power of the pilot, it increases the power of the ship by a multiplier. When you level up your ships, when you take the stars higher on your ships, it increases the multiplier. So character, the galactic power of the character determines uh, the base stats, the multiplier for the ship increases those base stats, and then the higher level your ship, the, the more you progress your ship, the more that multiplier is. So it makes this goofy thing where if you have a, a, a small pilot, a low gear pilot with low galactic power, but a really, really good ship, seven stars and all maxed out, uh, it, it's not going to be effective in fleet arena. The multiplier is going to be big, but you're multiplying a low amount of galactic power, so it's not great. Similarly, uh, if you have a really big character, like let's say you take a character all the way up to relic level, but the ship is only two stars, it, it's a better result than having a weak character in a big ship, but it's still not that great, right? You've got a, a good base stats, but a low multiplier. Uh, again, not that powerful. So what you want is you want to keep a balance of developing your characters as pilots and developing your ships. So a good pilot with good gear, a good ship with high stars is going to give you the best result in fleet. Uh, Zeta materials. Zetas are, you start acquiring them right away. If you buy the hyperdrive bundle, you'll be able to get them out of a fleet challenge. Um, you'll be able to get acquire them throughout the game in different areas. And in the Age of Lightspeed bundles, being able to buy relic characters. You get them at relic level, but they won't have Zetas on them. So your ability to keep up with the characters that you develop for all of the Zetas that you need is now impossible. So you will have characters in your account that you'll want Zetas on, and you just won't have Zetas for them. So the key thing right from the start of the game, do not waste Zeta materials. Do your research. Understand what characters, what Zetas are the best to use, and think about it. Put thought into every Zeta you apply. Do not waste these materials, um, or you'll end up uh, potentially regretting it. You can accumulate Zeta materials through the Challenge Tier 3. That's granted for free at the Hyperdrive Bundle. It just gives you that. You still want to unlock Tier 4 as a priority, uh, but that does require a pretty strong fleet. It's fine, you're going to be building ships anyway, so you'll build into Tier 4 uh, pretty quickly. But just realize that Tier 3 already gives you the Zetas. You don't have to hurry up and get Tier 4 in Fleet. That gets you good materials that you do want, but, but you'll already get that with the Hyperdrive Bundle. It's already unlocked. Let's talk about mods now. So in this game, if everybody had a Relic 5 Darth Vader, every single Relic 5 Darth Vader would be exactly the same. If you fought against an enemy's Darth Vader, it would be a coin flip who gets to go first. It would be a coin flip who gets a critical hit at the right time. And it, battles would be very unrewarding. They would not feel like they're skill-based. So they've introduced this system in the game for mods. Every character can have up to six mods. There's different shapes for each mod slot that your character can have. There's different sets that your character can have. So that's what makes your characters different than other players' characters. And in the simplest form possible, if your mods are better, then your characters are better. If you have more speed, your characters go first. So if your characters go first, and they're equal in all other ways, most likely you're going to win those matchups. So starting out early in the game, looking for mods that have good speed and uh, actually 
you know, spending resources, doing refreshes, getting plenty of mods is going to be the difference between a good account and a bad account. And uh, again, every player can buy a hyperdrive bundle. Everybody can buy light speed bundles. But the player who has mods to put on those characters is the player that's going to win equal matchups against uh, other players of the same sort. If you're struggling with mods, just uh, make it simple. Farm five to hut speed mods, offense, and potency, and just get those basic sets. Um, you can expand out and farm all the different mod sets <clears throat> at some point in the future. But just to get started, you just want to be able to complete those four mod sets. So you want a lot of speed mods, a lot of offense mods, a lot of potency, um, and that'll get you most of what you need for the early game. You can mod just about any character in the game with a speed set or an offense set, and then use the potency mods. You'll also get a bunch of health mods from events. You'll get other mods throughout the game. Don't use the mod store right away. The, the mods are really expensive out of the mod store. And then just suffice to say, once you have the five dot mod challenges unlocked, never farm anything that's not a five dot mod. If you do the hyperdrive bundle, you're gonna start with uh, no mods. You'll have a bunch of characters and no mods. And you immediately need to prioritize that. You need to start refreshing mods. Uh, the, the temptation is always going to be to use your crystals to refresh and farm more characters, to refresh the cantina to farm more characters. And then, you know, it just feels like, well, I don't have enough crystals to do those mod refreshes. But uh, I'm telling you right from the start, if you buy a hyperdrive bundle, getting at least two refreshes on mod energy for 50 crystals every day, farming more mods, uh, getting that system up and running is a big deal. Uh, I have a system called Mod Mastery. Watch those holocrons. Learn how to use your mods, a strategy for building good mods. I've got filters. The Mod Mastery 6 is the filters that I use to, to quickly go through the mods every week, develop the good ones, throw away the bad ones, and make characters. You know, you don't want weak characters. You want, you want your uh, characters to look like the guy in this picture, right? You want them to be, to be strong. All right, speed is important. It's the king of stats. Speed arrows. The arrows can have speed as a main stat. You want that. Uh, other mods, you want them to have speed whenever possible as a substat. Not every character has to be fast, but just in general, uh, start from the start of the game looking for mods with good speed. Uh, because, again, even if your character doesn't need to be fast, in general, if it's faster than your opponent's, it's a good thing. All right, it's not easy for anybody. You know, if, if somebody came in and said, hey, you know, Lokwitter, I see that you've got a really good mod score. It must be something you like or easy for you. And, and I will say it's, it's a challenge. You've got to pay attention to it. You've got to work on it every single week, at least I do. Um, and I hear people say, oh, you get lucky or this guy got lucky. There's no luck. There's statistics. Statistics give you a certain range in which you'll get good mods or not. And if you do the right things in a similar way on a long enough timeline, uh, the statistics are going to work out. There's, uh, again, statistics are, are what they are, and there's such a low likelihood that you'll continue to get bad mods forever, right? It may feel like luck, but, but it's not. It's just statistics. And over time, if you've got a good system, you'll develop plenty of good mods. So stick with it. You get a consistent method and just push through, and don't worry about luck. Guilds are a sense of community. It's an important part of the game. There is an in-game chat, but nobody uses it. Uh, most guilds are going to have a Discord server. So you get on Discord, you go hang out with all your uh, guild mates. You get directions on territory battles, where to put your stuff. You get direction on territory wars, what zones you're attacking, what they want to put down in territory wars as defensive. So Discord is a, a critical part of how we play Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, so get used to the idea. And even if you're not talkative, you don't really have to get in there and chat up a storm, uh, but you do need to be able to go in there and follow directions, because most guilds will give guild directions through Discord. Join a beginner built guild, move on when you're ready, uh, find a guild that fits you, right? If you're a casual player and you just want to collect and you join a guild that's very competitive, they're constantly going to be pushing you. Why didn't you get your 600 tickets? Why didn't you participate in this? Why didn't you fight all these battles? 
Um, if you're a casual player and you don't want to be bothered with all that stuff, find a casual guild. Find some a guild where they kick back and it's okay and people just play at their own pace and you're a community of, of people who are collecting Star Wars. It's fine. It's fun. If you are a competitive player and you join a casual guild, you're going to get incredibly frustrated because you're going to get your 600 tickets every day. Some people aren't even going to play the game for two or three days in a row and the raids just won't launch. And you'll find yourself doing one raid every two and a half weeks, and that's frustrating for a competitive player. So find a guild that matches your style. Figure out how you want to play the game. Are, are you going to be competitive and then get in a competitive guild? Are you going to be casual and then get in a casual guild? And you could change at any time. If you're a casual player and you decide you're going to get more serious about it, look for a different guild. When I first started the game, I stayed in my starting guild for a long time. I don't know what I was afraid of, but there were such cool people in my guild. We were hanging out, we were having fun, we were having a blast on Discord, and I was like, man, I do not want to leave this guild. These are fun people. Um, but eventually, I figured out that really, I'd outgrown that guild long ago, and as soon as I went into a new guild that was at the level that I wanted to be, it was so much more rewarding for me, for my account progress, for everything, and guess what? It was also full of totally cool people, and uh, I joined their Discord and had fun for a long time with that guild as well. So don't be worried, don't be afraid. Uh, there's, it really is a pretty good community and you'll be able to find lots of guilds. All right, just suffice to say, getting into the right kind of guild for you is uh, very important. All right, let's close it out by saying, in the early game, I do still recommend getting into a guild that's doing light side Hoth and dark side Geo. Light side Hoth gets you Rebel Officer Leia Organa. Dark side Geo gets you Wat Tambor. These are characters that are hard to get later if you don't get them at first. So early game guilds will usually be doing those territory battles. Consider getting into a guild like that at first. If you don't, it'll be hard to go back later. And if you do that, the Geos are one of the best teams. They'll help you get Wat Tambor. They're pilots, their fleet, it's a lot of stuff. If you want to look for a guild, there is a recruitment service uh, out there that's fantastic in Discord. Uh, it's not my personal service, but if you go down and click the link below and join the Lokwater Holocrons, go to the recruitment channel. The, it's listed in there. You can go over there and check their Discord out. It's an easy way to find a guild for any, anybody at any level. Uh, there's daily objectives, and most people don't pay any attention to this, so I'll give you another hint as a new player. If you go all the way over in your objectives tab, all the way over to the right, you can see what the, the activities are for the day. So it'll tell you how many tickets you got, and then within there, there'll be some daily um, objective. Some days it's, let's say, uh, spend energy on dark side nodes, spend energy on light side nodes, spend energy on cantina battles. If you do this and the rest of people in your guild don't do this, uh, you'll score top placement and get a bunch of free currency every day. So when it's dark side day, just spend all your energy on dark side. When it's light side day, spend all your energy on light side. If you're saving up crystals for cantina refreshes, do cantina refreshes when it's cantina day. It's a simple way, but again, most people don't pay any attention to this at all. They just do a routine the same way every day. So if you pay even just a little bit of attention to this, uh, you can get some free resources. It's not a big deal, but it's another way to just incrementally get ahead of other people. All right. Um, so energy management. With, uh, with all the energy types, the first three refreshes are always the cheapest. So with the light, dark energy, fleet, and mod energy, uh, 50 crystals for the first three refreshes. Then canteen, it costs 100 for the first three refreshes. And we call these the basic refreshes. And when you're playing in this game, those basic refreshes are the most efficient use of crystals to try to get ahead. Once you go past those three refreshes, the cost goes up, the efficiency goes down, um, you can figure out the story from there. So if we talk about just any kind of GAC performance, just get into GAC, win half your battles, just get fleet placement, just even, uh, let's say, top 20 placement, something like that, it's not hard to get 300 crystals a day. With 300 crystals a day, we could do three energy refreshes, two mod refreshes, and a fleet refresh, and then we build up from there as we get more crystals. If we get good fleet placement, then we put those cantina refreshes in up front, and uh, 
just get ahead of everybody. With good GAC placement, we can average easily over 500 crystals a day, and uh, that's three of everything, and then Cantina refreshes with the extra. It's important to pay attention to your uh, free energy that you get in the game. You get free energy three times a day, and it adds up. It's a lot. In, and uh, you want to set yourself up so that you can collect that energy. I do my reset time at 6. Your first free energy is 12 hours later. So at 6 a.m., then I'll get three free, I'll get free energy of mod energy, um, cantina energy, and regular energy. And it lasts for two hours. If you don't pick up your free energy within two hours, um, you lose it. So between 6 and 8, I can grab that free energy. If I come in after 8 o'clock, that energy's gone. Uh, the next set of energy comes 6 hours after that. So at noon, I'll get 50, I'll get another uh, free 45 free fleet energy and regular energy. And then 3 hours after that, you get the last. And then 3 hours after that, it's reset again. So just be aware of these uh, energy when they show up and set it to a time that's convenient for you. Uh, your payout times for fleet and squad are also involved with that timing. So again, if I do a 6 p.m. reset on my account, then my squad payout is at noon and my fleet payout is at 1 o'clock. So I manage the fleet payouts and my free energy. Uh, again, set it for a time that's good for you. If you're in a fleet shard, if you join fleet uh, arena and you're doing well and somebody starts a discord around the fleet to arrange the payout times, join that, set your payout time, and um, that might be more important than, than the free energy. All right, so five dot mods. Again, once we unlock a node with five dots, that's all we're going to farm. Uh, bronzium uh, friendship points can open bronzium packs in the, in the shop. You can also buy stuff with friend points. Don't do that. Use all of your uh, friend point, friendship points to open bronze impacts. It gives you gear. It gives you character shards. The character shards will eventually go into the shard shop, so it's all good. Just open bronze impacts. Um, if you're free to play and you're under level 85, manage your galactic power. There's a game mode called Galactic Wars. It becomes more difficult the more galactic power you have. So you want to build a good team for Galactic Wars. You want to keep your galactic power low until 85. And then Hyperdriver, after 85, build as much GP as you can. You're going to be short on money. There's a new system in the shops. The Mark I raid tokens in that shop can be used to buy credits. Credits are going to be required to level up characters, to add skills, all that stuff. You'll be out of credits for the rest of the game. But just be aware that you can save that raid currency, and then every time it's in the shop, you can buy uh, you know, a million credits uh, at a time, 500,000 credits. Uh, there's two different kinds of purchases you can make. So just plan to buy a bunch of credits out of that shop to help you develop your characters. And uh, don't buy credits for crystals. Credits for crystals is a terrible value. Just get some raid currency, buy your credits out of that shop. Split your raid spending between those Mark I tokens for credits and characters, and then eventually work into gear. Spend the Mark to two tokens on the gear that you need to make relics, the gold gear, and then spend the Mark III tokens generally on Electrum, uh, Zinbittle, or Impulse Detectors out of the shop. Uh, if you are going to play free-to-play, just be aware that you, your fleet arena opens up at 60. You need to play for level 60 to have good fleet. And then um, there's a, a fleet Tier 3 Material Fleet Challenge that opens up at level 78. You have to qualify for that. So those are your two big things that you got to pay attention to. And unfortunately, if you are free to play, you know, once you get into that fleet arena, all the hyperdrive bundle players are going to be ahead of you. And then, as I said before, if people buy the light speed bundles, they'll just push you out of the fleet arena entirely. So as a free-to-play player, um, you know, good luck competing. And I say that because, uh, you know, four months ago I created my own account, the Lex Talionis Project in 2023. I played the game again from 1 to 85 to try to become familiar with how it works. So when I'm talking about this free-to-play, I talk from experience. I built it. I've done it. I'm telling you, it just can't work in the current environment. It's not good. All right. Use your three basic refreshes every day. Don't pay the escalated costs, and then pay attention to your reset time. With crystal spending, again, just to refresh, do a regular energy refresh, 
If you can get a cantina refresh at all, especially early in the game, if you're under 85, you want to do one cantina refresh as a priority every day. One regular energy, one cantina energy. Then go back for regular energy refreshes, mod refreshes, fleet, etc. Uh, but it kind of gives you an idea as you're playing through 1 to 85 where you would uh, spend it. If you are spending money, again, the hyperdrive bundle and the light speed bundles are the place to spend it. If you're only going to spend a small amount on the game after the hyperdrive bundle, then my recommendation is buy the hyperdrive bundle and then do nothing and just wait for the light speed bundles. They're going to be absolutely the best value. There's nothing else in the game that you can buy that's better. If you are going to willing to spend a little bit of money, let's say even $20 a month, uh, if you're going to spend like $20 a month in the game, just buy crystals. Make sure you get a lot of cantina refreshes in, especially in the early game. It's a huge value. Uh, there's not any gear or character that you could buy out of the shops that'll make a bigger difference than just getting those cantina refreshes. That'll generate cantina income for the cantina store. It'll generate character signal data that you need out of the cantina. So it, um, it, it is the most powerful way to snowball your account early on. Spending cash on gear or characters is extremely misleading. So what I did here for, for the purpose of, um, if anybody who knows my channel knows I love math. So what I did here, uh, I, I spent time looking at every bit of gear that I got uh, over a period of time in a stabilized account. So let's say you're up and running, you've been playing the game at least six months, or that you got the hyperdrive bundle and you've played for at least three months and you've got your account stabilized. If you're doing three refreshes on each energy type, you're doing the daily challenges, getting your events, all of that stuff, a, a, a reasonable account. This is not an optimized account. This is not a great account. This is just a account that's participating in guild events, raids, daily stuff, and farming. Just doing the normal stuff you can. If you were to buy everything that you can get in a week in terms of income, it represents 93,818 crystals worth of gear, character shards, Zetas, currency, etc. Okay? That's, you know, buying credits, buying all the stuff. So $597, it would take almost $600 to purchase what you get for free in one week. Now, obviously, if you made $600 worth of crystal purchases or whatever, I mean, you wouldn't be buying exactly the same stuff that you'd be farming. You'd be able to make better use of it. But it just gives you an idea, and it's a warning to people who are going to get in here and spend a lot of money. Uh, I've seen it before where people come in, and they spend like six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800. They boost a bunch of characters up to relic level right away. Um, they don't have Zetas on those characters. They don't have good mods on those characters. They try to keep spending, but they've exhausted all their resources. Every character that they're trying to, to build, being impatient and just trying to force the characters up to relic level, it gets less and less and less satisfying, harder and harder to do, and costs more and more money. Um, so I've helped these players before, and I would say that easily 80% of people who play this way uh, gas the account with a whole bunch of money and then quit. Uh, within the first six months of playing uh, because it's just not rewarding. You, you just The impatient spending, um, you know, you could spend a whole lot of money to take a character to relic level, but I'm telling you, once your account is fully developed, you can develop a relic character every single week. So all the money that you would have to spend to do that, two or three hundred dollars worth of materials, is what you will get in a week anyway. So spending all that money, you could have just waited a week. So I'm telling you, my opinion, my experience, just let the game come to you. Spend on crystals, spend on the hyperdrive bundle, spend on the light speed bundles if that's how you want to do it. But don't, uh, don't, don't try to force a bunch of characters to relic. You'll waste your money and annoy, annoy yourself. So the best values, if you're first starting out, the hyperdrive bundle is definitely worth it. The Hound's Tooth Pack, you can go into the Millennium Falcon Journey, go to the store there, and you can see that there's a Millennium Falcon Pack that gives you the Hound's Tooth. It lets you start that ship a little sooner. It's a decent value for $25. Um, again, light speed bundles now eclipse that, so I, I probably wouldn't buy the Hound's Tooth Pack um, unless you're going to spend more money. And then if you're going to spend up to $100 to start the game, it, I would just say focus on crystals. Just anything up to $100 in spending beyond the hyperdrive bundle 
either light speed bundles or just buy crystals to, to do your refreshes. If you're what they call a dolphin, you're going to spend $20 sometimes just buy the light speed bundles. If you're going to do like $20 a month, crystals for cantina refreshes. If you're going to spend a lot of money, my recommendation is if you're going to spend more money on crystals, like $100 a month, you need to do the six, uh, six refreshes on mods every day. Because what will happen if you're spending money to accelerate your progress, you'll build more characters. And again, the, the, how we're going to make those characters good is mods. And if you don't also then increase your spending on mods, your account will quickly fall behind. You'll have a bunch of high-level characters with really weak mods. Okay, final warning on spending is just to say, up front, we're going to spend money. We need to spend it on fleet. Remember, if you spend it on fleet, you generate crystals. Once you're generating those crystals, 400 a day for first place, that's 2800 a week. That's worth $20. When you're generating $20 worth of crystals for free every week, you don't have to spend money on the game anymore. So accelerate your account building by accelerating your fleet. If you're going to spend money in the early game, that's where it has to go, and that's why. Um, again, let's discuss account building, the snowball effect. It's all going to happen, um, like we said, through the fleet. I like to talk about three layers of account building. So right, one, right when you start building your account, what you can do is you can think about uh, account building in three different levels. Pick one character and just focus on that character and build it to relic level. In the second layer, pick your next one or two characters that you're planning to relic and make sure that you build them up to gear 12. So layer one, we're doing a character from gear 12 to relic level. On the second layer, we're trying to make sure that we've always got another gear 12 character ready to go. And then the third layer is going to be collecting shards because, again, characters have to be at seven stars in order to go to relic level. So the third layer is, is what characters you're farming to get to seven stars. So you can plan out sort of this um, block strategy for how you, you build your characters. Um, it, game modes have been developed and relic characters are required. So I've seen players come in and they play the game for months and they're just building up stuff to gear 12 and they say, well, you know, I don't really understand this whole relic thing and I'll get to relicking characters later. Uh, but the uh, Galactic Challenges game mode, the Conquest game mode, the Territory Battles, all of it, the raids, everything in the game is designed for relic level characters now. So if you just sit on these gear 12 characters and you think, well, I'll get to relic la later, don't do it. Journeys are required to get the best characters. Pick a journey, go on a journey, start relicking characters, get those relics, get the journey characters, build relics to play the game. Okay. Uh, we already talked about the three layers of account building, so I'll skip over that slide. I guess I went a little early on that. When should you develop your first relic? Man, if you buy the hyperdrive bundle, you need to use the resources out of the hyperdrive bundle to, to get a character to gear 12 and start working on that gear 13 for a relic right away. As soon as you start the account, you click the button, you hit level 85, you should already be working on your first relic character. Don't wait. The first relic character will probably take you three or four weeks to build. Don't be discouraged by that. It'll start to go faster later. But, uh, but get in there and get started right away. Use your farming for that. Um, how do you pick a journey? Uh, there's, again, there's all kinds of builds and guides and things out there to tell you which journey to pick. But basically what you're going to do, you're going to go to the journey guide. You're going to select when you go into your character tabs, there'll be a journey guide tab in there. You can pull up all the characters and ships that are part of that journey. So that's a way for you to pick the journey, understand what characters you have to build, what ships you have to build, and, and go through and start guiding your account from there. All right, be careful spending gear, gear elsewhere. So again, if you start a journey and then you decide that, uh, again, another mistake I've seen new players make, they start a journey and then they, oh, I heard Imperial Troopers are good. So they start building Imperial Troopers and then they start building uh, something else and something else. And then they get a light speed bundle and they start building something else. And uh, the, the truth is, finish what you start. You know, if you start a journey, stay on that journey. If you hear about something that, that you really want to do, Set that as your next thing to do, right? Finish what you start, get it done, get those characters built up. Don't get distracted by every new thing to come to the game. Uh, finish it out 
and then decide what the next good thing is for you. Um, planned account building like that is always going to be more rewarding and it'll help you get the payouts on these big, uh, big journeys. All right, farming hard nodes. We, t we talked about, uh, for anybody who doesn't know what farming is, if you've never heard that term before, uh, every day you'll be able to do a hard node for five runs and then the, it, it, you kind of run out of runs for that hard node until it resets the next day. So farming is just going in there and doing those five runs every day. For a brand new character or ship that's only a single shard drop, it takes about seven months in total to get to 330 shards. So just be aware of that. If you're farming a hard node every single day, uh, for a character you start out at zero shards, you can expect it to take three and a half months for most of the characters that have double shard drops, or up to seven months for a brand new character uh, that has single shard drops. Ships, you want Anakin's ship when you first come into the game, it'll be about seven months of farming. To spend around 400 energy per day on shards uh, seems about right. You do somewhere around four to six hard farms a day, and then you use the rest of your energy to farm gear. So for me, um, there's a gear efficiency guide that I've done that'll walk you through that. Um, and again, less efficient results, uh, less efficient play gets less efficient results. So stick to that kind of plan, four to six hard nodes a day, and then spend the rest of your energy on light side 7B for Chirotech shock prods. That's uh, always going to be a good way to spend your energy. All right, so let's go over some key points again. Ships and single drops need to be planned ahead. For a non-relic journey like CLS or Revan, you take the farming slots, but not the relic cycles. Uh, when your project is ahead, then you can fit in a minor journey. So let's say you do the profundity or executor first. As you get all your characters farmed out and you're finished on that and you're working on your last few relics, then you can move ahead to the next one and you can fit in one of these other smaller journeys. Uh, SLKR, for example, maybe you start that journey and maybe you're waiting on the finalizer, something like that, then you can fit in a smaller journey in between. Just to give you an idea of, of how that can run. Always be working on one character to take the relic. Use the shops and farming strategy to get ahead on your next journey. Keep characters at gear 12 so you can keep going. And then always plan out ahead and be farming, you know, anywhere from three to seven months ahead uh, on what you're going to build next. So the conclusion, build fleet first, pay attention to events, and then work your way into hard conquest. Spend your in-game resources efficiently, spend money wisely, don't expect to win the game. Uh, just get in there, have fun, collect your Star Wars stuff, be part of your guild, find a guild that fits your style, and have fun with the game. That's the 2024 introduction to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. I hope that gives everybody an idea of what to expect efficient ways to play the game here at the start to make sure that you use your resources wisely, that you're not throwing away a bunch of stuff on gear and characters that aren't needed. And um, I hope this helps. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next Holocron.